Hey folks, just wanted to post a quick response video to Matt's video that he posted earlier today about implementing array.filter, but at the type level. As we can see here, his solution totally works. We can see that the type of results is now a number array, and we're only operating with things at the type level. However, if I go to line 12 here and uncomment it, we'll see that TypeScript still has an issue with this because in its mind, this array is still an array of strings or numbers. Now the solution to this is to use type predicates, which is a feature of TypeScript. This filter method is already taking a predicate. However, this predicate is not typed. Uh, as it stands, this predicate is returning a Boolean. However, we can inform TypeScript that what this function is doing is determining whether x is a number. And in doing so, we can see that our red squigglies are gone because now TypeScript is asserting that our array returned by the filter method is now correctly an array of numbers. We can see if we move the result here explicitly, it correctly infers that the type of results is now a number array. And the interesting thing too about this is we can now actually take all of this extra typing that we had done and comment it out, and this still works just fine. So at the end of the day, hopefully this is a nice tip for how you can use type predicates to simplify your TypeScript to get the same effect, but with fewer keystrokes. So there you go. Hey folks, I got a great question from Remus today talking about my video from yesterday. He said something like this wouldn't work for an interface because you can't do x equals my interface or type of x equals my interface. So what should we do for a more complex object then? Well, I have on screen here, this is sort of our example from yesterday. It's a predicate that returns instead of a Boolean, whether X is a string or not. And here we have a very straightforward way of telling whether our X is a string. However, if we take a look at our to-do interface up here, we'll see that this is a more complex object and we end up having to do something like this in order to figure out at runtime whether this object matches our interface or not, which is fine, but it takes a lot of typing. So fortunately, there's a library for this and that library is called Zod. And if we scroll down here, I have a better implementation of our to-do interface that uses Zod to create an object that is using all these Zod utilities to say ID is a string, text is a string, and completed is a Boolean. We can then create a type by inferring this from the schema that we created. And then our is better to do becomes trivial, where we are still using type predicates to say that X is a better to do, but we're just using the safe parse method on our schema in order to determine whether an object matches our schema or not. So TLDR, use Zod. Hey, what's up folks? Today I wanted to talk about the asserts keyword in TypeScript. We can see in the example above here, we're using the asserts keyword here to let TypeScript know that if a parameter can pass through this validate string function and not error, that it must know it's a string at that point. So we can see here on line seven, this foo is declared as an any type. And on line nine, it's still an any type. But now that we've passed the validate string call, we can see on line 11, our foo is now a string type. So this is called type narrowing. And it's the same mechanism that we've talked about in the past with type predicates, only now it's the asserts keyword. This can be particularly helpful in Express, for example, when you're validating the shape of a request body. We can see here on line six, when we first declare our body variable, it comes in as any, as it should. But after we validate it here, we can now know our body matches our to-do interface as declared over here with Zod. And that is the asserts keyword. Hey folks, today I want to look at this interesting error. We have an interface here that has a type that is a specific string here, my event. And we have a function here who should return an object that matches the my event interface. However, when we declare the event, we can see that we are getting an error here because the type type is a string is not assignable to type my event. And as we can see here, if we highlight the event variable, it's right, uh, type here is a string. We can actually come in here and say event.type equals foo. And now the event object we're returning no longer implements the my event interface. So TypeScript actually helped us out here. We can fix this though by using as const. And that's going to type narrow our event object so that it actually correctly matches the my event interface now. And as we can see, TypeScript's happy. So some cool things there on how you can use as const to enhance your TypeScript. Hope this helps. Hey folks, today I wanted to talk about using as const with arrays and some of the cool things we can do with that. You can see on screen here, we have this Pokemon types array, which TypeScript currently sees as a string array. However, if we use the as const keyword here, 
We can see that as far as TypeScript's concerned, our Pokemon types is now a read-only array of these specific strings in this specific order. Now, because it's a read-only array, we can see if we bring up the array and look at all the methods available on it, we can see that this is actually filtered down to only the methods that are immutable. So for example, if we try to use splice here, we'll see that the property splice does not exist on type read-only array. Also, because these strings are in a specific order, we can see if we pick one at a specific index and create a constant to this, we can see that the type of our foo is actually specifically the string fire, which matches the type here at index one. Now that's very cool, but we can also create a union type based off of our array. We can see here, type Pokemon type is equal to type of our Pokemon types array with any number as an index. And what this will do is create a union array with all of our types here from the original array. So this way the array becomes a source of truth and we can also export it so we can do things like iterate through it if we ever need to do that in our code or we can use the Pokemon type at the TypeScript level and they'll both be sourced from the same source of truth. You can see here if we add another type to the array, as soon as that is done, our union type also has that type added to it. So really cool stuff here with using as const in TypeScript for arrays. Hope it helped out. I'll catch you all next time. Hey folks, hope you like this week's good TypeScript tips. If you want to catch the daily updates, be sure to follow me on Twitter. I'll be doing more again next week. Not sure if I'll do TypeScript yet or some other concept that I know some things about, but I'll do something. Be sure to follow NX if you want to catch our live streams or follow me here on YouTube if you want to catch some of my live streams with Supership. And yeah, hope this was helpful. Hope you all have a great weekend and I'll see you next week.